Hello film fans and welcome to this episode of The Shilokian. Now this review comes after a request in the YouTube comments section of one of my videos from the great Allosaurus who kindly asked whether I would mind reviewing Walking with Dinosaurs and my first thought was yeah of course I'm willing to review anything if people are interested in hearing about it but I hadn't seen this show for absolutely ages so I decided to go back and watch it and then to give you my thoughts on it and I must confess um, I was both very very impressed and also a bit disappointed so here are my thoughts well why was I disappointed because after all this show is legendary it was the grandfather of all dinosaur mock documentaries when this came out it took the world by storm and that's only slightly hyperbolic it was a bit of a revolution really no one had ever really set out with um, both CGI and in this show as well animatronics to try and create the prehistoric environment as it appeared to science at the time and to make it feel like the viewer had actually gone back in time and was seeing you know, a proper documentary filmed in the past. So why on earth would I be disappointed? I mean this show was the most expensive the BBC had ever created um, and I think it probably is still up there you know if it was based on you know, money at the time. By comparison uh, Planet Dinosaur only took a third of the budget I think part of the reason might have been as well is because they actually sent film crews all over the world to film the locations and then got busy with the CGI and the animatronics. Indeed, you kind of can't help wondering why they didn't just do what they did with Prehistoric Planet, which is use archive footage they had. After all, they knew they filmed Planet Earth, um, I think, by this point. If they hadn't, they'd filmed lots of other famous documentaries like, you know, The Trials of Life and um, Life on Earth and Blue Planet. I mean, Surely it wouldn't have been that difficult just to have used the footage from those and then superimpose dinosaurs on them. But no, they had to go and film new footage and of course this was incredibly expensive. So why was I disappointed then? Well, I remember when I saw this show as a child, first of all I was incredibly impressed. I remember actually being quite frightened by some of the carnivorous dinosaurs. The scene where the T-Rex actually you know, turns towards the camera and roars, I remember being quite frightened of. I thought, oh no, it might, you know, come out the camera. I was, <laughs> I was a very timid child. And I, you know, I was a bit like those people you read about you know, in the 1900s when they saw a you know, car coming towards the screen in the cinema. They all ran away because they thought it was uh, just about to burst through and run them over. But when I went back and watched it, the CGI looks a bit ropey. Now, of course, this is incredibly unfair because at the time, this was state of the art. I mean, you know, and it blew people's minds that you could actually you know, go on a computer screen and move a dinosaur around. You could make it look like a T-Rex was chasing another dinosaur or you could you see a plesiosaur swimming through the, you know, the waters of the deep ocean. You know, and this was incredible. But if you look at it, obviously, and not only by today's standards, because obviously that would be incredibly unfair to say, you know, prehistoric planet is much better because its CGI looks real. Because of course it does. It's, you know, it's filmed, you know, 20 years you know, in the future from where Walking with Dinosaurs was. So of course it looks a lot better. But actually, if you look at the difference between the animatronics and the CGI with a modern eye, it does look incredibly different. Because the animatronics still really hold up. For instance, the scene where you see the, I think they're Euteraptors, um, hunting, um, I think it's, it, um, I think it's Iguanodon they're hunting. And the scene where you see that happening, the bits with the animatronics, I mean, granted, now we'd probably have Euteraptors with feathers on, but apart from that, it still looks incredibly impressive. You could imagine that actually was happening in front of the camera. But... The bits where it's actually chasing the Iguanodon, you really couldn't. It looks like it's, you know, early CGI. And it's that kind of strange difference between the two. If you just watch a clip of the show, that it's kind of a bit off-putting. You sort of think, oh, I remember this as being, you know, better. Because, of course, at the time, it was state-of-the-art. So, you know, everybody was incredibly impressed by it. So, does that mean I hate the show and think it's rubbish? No, of course I don't. It's absolutely amazing. If you watch the entire episode of it, I was so impressed. And it brought back so many good memories of all those, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, you know, famous BBC documentaries, things like, you know, The Trials of Life, Life in the Freezer, Life on Earth, um, Life in the Undergrowth, Life of Animals, Life of Birds, Life in Cold Blood, uh, The Private Life of Plants, all those d documentaries. And I've forgotten how they'd made the 
um, opening to Walking with Dinosaurs very similar to those shows and I'm sure that wasn't a coincidence. It was designed to look exactly like they'd gone back in time and filmed a documentary. It was kind of, if you think of um, Prehistoric Planet, which of course has you know, only just come out, if you think of that as being kind of a, you know, based on modern BBC documentaries, so you know, Planet Earth 2, um, Seven Worlds, One Planet, um, um, Blue Planet 2, Planet Earth 2, that kind of thing. If you think of Prehistoric Planet as being, you know, a, an adaption of that kind of format with its, you know, absolutely gorgeous, you know, um, footage and the um, concentration on, you know, maybe small, interesting behaviour, little sort of vignettes of interesting um, biology from different types of animals, maybe stuff you wouldn't expect with, you know, a gorgeous, you know, shot composition, a bit like a, you know, a modern film with, you know, amazing swelling score. Um, Walking with Dinosaurs was basically, you know, that, but with all those other earlier documentaries. So, you know, actually the quality of the film shot, you know, is a lot better in modern documentaries. But the way this is shot, you know, to try and get a kind of overall narrative to the story, um, concentration of sort of quite big, spectacular events, um, again, sort of, you know, groundbreaking camera techniques for the time, and... Even though it hasn't got David Attenborough, it's got Kenneth Branagh, who does an absolutely magnificent job. I mean, his voice, you know, very resonant, isn't it? And it's got that uh, very kind of authoritative um, sort of manner behind it, which I think helps when he's describing things in the past, which actually, a lot of it was based on supposition. Now, I, of course, I mention this a lot when I um, review dinosaur shows. I say, well, actually, that probably isn't true. You know, they, you know, they probably used a bit of guesswork with that. But this is particularly true with this show. I mean, I've mentioned before in one of my other reviews. I think it was the um, Planet Dinosaur one. Um, I mentioned that um, Kenneth Branagh once said that you know when he was criticised on some you know I don't know <laughs> geeky person on I don't know, on the early internet probably sort of said, well, oh, Mr. Branagh, I think you'll find that that's not quite the case. You know, me thinks that Liplorodon was a bit big. He said, well, prove it isn't true. And I think having his voice behind it kind of gives that authority, which makes you, as a casual viewer, um, believe that it's true, even though it might actually be you know based a bit on guesswork. Uh, talking weird about Planet Dinosaur, actually. I mentioned when I reviewed that, of course, what I liked about that is that it, you know, takes you well into the science of it, shows, you know, you know, how they've come to the conclusions they've just talked about. And Walking with Dinosaurs doesn't do that, but actually in the original, there was their intention, strangely enough. Apparently they were going to use um, CGI to sort of, they sort of give the viewer almost x-ray vision at times, so they could see the bones underneath and they would sort of talk a bit about, you know, how, you know, they come to the conclusions they had by showing you sort of, you know, the evidence, if you like, on, you know, the living dinosaur as it walked around. I'm quite glad they didn't do that because while that was a really cool concept, and I think they only didn't do it because it was too expensive, really, and they thought or thought it might detract from the kind of, you know, um, documentary format they were going for, because obviously, you know, that doesn't normally happen on most documentaries at the time. I'm quite glad they didn't because I think, you know, over the course of, you know, the passage of time, it would have looked awful. The CGI would have looked really ropey, wouldn't it? And so that's probably a good thing that they didn't do that. But yeah, I mean, obviously there are errors. For example, I think the most famous one they probably made is the Lipluridon. At the time, there was only fragments of fossils around and of, of, of skeletal structure of Lipluridon. Um, so they show Lipluridon as this humongous, massive sea reptile. It's like 25 metres long, I think Kenneth Branagh says. And it's swimming around all over the place, you know, eating other dinosaurs and other marine reptiles. And it's really scary. But actually, you know, modern scientists generally assume, and I think even at the time this was a bit controversial, they generally say it's probably about 10 metres long, um, which is, you know, quite a bit of a, you know, downscaling, isn't it? You know, 25 metres, 10 metres, all the same really, isn't it? <laughs> but of course, you know, it doesn't obviously change um, that the documentary is brilliant and it's really enjoyable watching this huge reptile swimming around. I mean, I particularly like the scene at the beginning of um, The Cruel Seas, which I think is my favourite episode. Um, it's very tightly plotted and it's quite nice. It starts, you know, the, the Lyperodon is like the, the main focus of the entire episode. It sort of swims around eating everything and then at the end it gets beached and it's food for other dinosaurs because it obviously slowly dies because it's suffocated by its own weight. And I, I like the tight, well, tight plot structure of that. But um, there's a scene at the beginning where the Lyperodon takes a dinosaur off the beach. Um, which is so reminiscent of that famous scene in The Trials of Life, which they've shot again and again for things like uh, Blue Planet and The Hunt, where you have orcas in Patagonia um, eating sea lions 
off the beach, don't you? When they you know, they come out of the sea and grab them and then sort of wriggle back in again. And I think that was again intentional. You can see that there's definitely a kind of um, um, focus in the shot composition of you know filming stuff they'd already filmed to try and um, you know I probably bring back memories of those um, different uh, documentaries they'd already filmed. And um, because obviously you need to base you know some your documentary on something and the fact they based it on you know, the most famous documentaries of the time is you know it's hardly you know a uh, particularly original concept is it but it's it's, it's very good idea and it's um, very clever and it gives a kind of sense of realism to the milky with dinosaurs that otherwise i don't think it would have had oh yeah and one other thing in that episode there's actually a scene where a dinosaur swims across you know the sea so it actually shows that you know prehistoric planet i mean it's very unoriginal they're just copying walking with dinosaurs really aren't they you know they thought well we're doing better than that we'll make it instead of some little dinosaur no one's ever heard of we'll make it t-rex you know much more revolutionary <laughs> but i so maybe they weren't basing it on the sloth as i claimed in my <laughs> um, review of prehistoric planet and they're actually basing it on walking with dinosaurs but anyway i just saw that when i um watched them again and thought oh yeah <laughs> oh, i know where i've seen that before um which i thought was quite amusing anyway that was my very quick review of walking with dinosaurs and um, thank you very much for you know taking interest in the channel and um, particularly to the, again to the great Allosaurus for um, asking me to review it. If anyone else has got anything they'd like me to review, I'd be only too happy to oblige. Um, yeah, um, and if anyone would like me to do any more videos on um, Walking with Dinosaurs, obviously it was an incredible show and I've only just skimmed the surface because it's so difficult to um, review it in any depth in just, you know, I think a 12 minute video. But nevertheless, you know, so if anyone would like me to um, go into more detail, I'd be only too happy. But yeah, that was the Shalokian. Thanks very much for watching, film fans. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.